Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at some of the cool and interesting ways that you can create unique animations by using the Look At feature in iClone. You can see an example of different Look At scenarios here, first with Basic Look At, then combining that with Accessory Look At, and finally adding in a reach target. We'll go through a couple of examples here, but let's start with the Basic Character Look At where our soldier is going to follow the glowing ball. Simply ensure that your character is selected, and you'll find a Look At section over in the Attributes tab of the Modify panel. Here we're going to use Pick Target, and then simply click on the glowing ball. Under Weight, you can choose to distribute more Look At strength to either the body or head with their respective sliders. You can move around your target object to see the results. That's really all there is to the basic Look At, but let's take a look at more creative ways to use it. We can also assign a look at constraint to the gun as well, in order to get it to point more accurately at the glowing ball. You can see initially that the aim is a little bit off, so let's repeat the same selection and pick target sequence with the gun and glowing ball. You'll immediately see the gun snap to aim directly at the ball. There are a number of further options that now appear in the Modify panel, including Look Axis, which determines the axis range of the gun accessory itself. Depending on the axis alignment of your accessory, this will affect the positioning of your accessory in different ways. Here, it simply tilts it slightly to align better with the gun's z-axis. You can also define the angle constraint values under Azimuth and Altitude to further tweak the result. Above that, there is a Look At Axis drop-down as well, and this is for the axis of focus on the target object. If I select the Y axis here, the Look At will constrain to that axis of the object. However, you'll notice that the nozzle of the gun is pretty far below the actual target. To fix this, I can then go down and enter a lower value for altitude, which will bring it to point at the object more accurately. Again, every constraint and target objects are going to have unique axis alignments, not to mention how they are placed and rotated in the scene, as it's the local axis that is being used here. Okay, next let's look at how we can use the Reach Target feature to enhance our character's body position while also utilizing the Look At constraint. The Reach Target can be found in the Animation tab of the Modify panel. Since I want my character's torso to be facing the direction of the glowing ball, what I'm going to do is select the Hip node, then click on Select Target and Keep Current Pose so as not to mess with my current character's pose. From there, I'll simply click the glowing ball. It looks like nothing has changed, but we still need to ensure that we lock both the foot nodes as well, otherwise they will follow the hip movement and float around. You can simply click on Lock to Original to maintain their positions. Now for the hip constraint, it's important that we deselect all of the transform boxes under Reach Mode as we don't want the hip position to change, only the rotation. You can see now that if we move the target object, we can get him to do a nice hip rotation. You can also use the Prop Puppet tool to move and record the movement of your dummy object in real time and on multiple axes. You can see an example of that here. In our final example for this video, we're going to have our character focus on multiple different targets throughout the timeline. Here we have our soldier running along, and the first thing I want to do is assign a look at constraint to our first red dummy along his path. Note that we have the timeline open, and you'll see a number of keyframes assigned at frame 40 where I've activated it, and there's also a blend from frame 1 to frame 40 of the look at strength. At that same frame, I can adjust the parameters we looked at earlier to determine the appearance of the animation. I can then continue along the timeline to a point where I want his focus to change, and repeat the process with the second dummy. Note that all of the look at parameters can also be changed at individual times, but here I'm keeping them all at the same frame. There's also a blending nub that appears when you click on the keyframe in the look at object track that you can move up and down the timeline to refine the blending. This is particularly useful if you encounter any jerky movements in your look at constraint. That's it for some of the basic look at scenarios. Be on the lookout for more advanced ones in the future. 
Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.